Eliza Bear from Mary Sean Slap, and welcome to the F equals MA exam 2020B question 6. Uh, oh, that's 6. Alright, so this was the hardest one to understand for me so far. Took quite a while of briefing from my big bro, but basically, here's the question of number 6. It says, let's say we have an equilateral triangle. And this equilateral triangle is not just any equilateral triangle, it's a table. A table with one vertice at each leg. So this is from a bird's eye view, obviously. So, and the legs are going into the smart board. So what are we looking at here? Well, basically it says, when we put a mass here, a point mass that has a mass M, then all three legs simultaneously break. So I'm just going to put a little arrow here. All three legs, uh, let's put the mass back in, do that a little later because I love procrastination. All three legs are going to snap in half simultaneously. So with that said, and the knowledge that all legs are identical. Oh yeah, and the knowledge that if you have any mass less than M and put it in the center, none of the legs will break, then what is the largest? No. If you have a second mass, this time two-thirds M, and you remove the mass of M from the table, what region can you put 2 over 3m in such that no legs break this is a tricky boy and it requires a lot of intuitive thinking so first of all Let's have uh, our three vertices, A, B, C. So now, if we can take any point in the triangle, whoop de doo whoop de doo and uh, <coughs> this is where our mass is going to be, what we can do is we can, let's lower the thickness, we can, sit, can consider an axis that is parallel to one of the sides and goes through the mass. And now you might ask, why parallel to any one of the sides? Well, because that makes it more convenient for us. And uh, because if we had it, say, if we had it, say, at any random thing, like here, for example, then the distance from here to this leg would be something that uh, would take an eternity to find. So, uh, now we can do it this way, or we can do it parallel to any one of the three sides. So we could do it this way, or we could do it uh, this way. But for our sake, we're not going to go through all three cases and just go through one. Because of rotational symmetry, all three give the same results. Not symmetry, symmetry. So, this is two-thirds M. Now, after all that yada yada blada blada, let's define this. Oh my god, it's painfully thick. You know what they say, I like them thick and hard and creamy. <laughs> I should not have said that on camera. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> oh no, I'm gonna get canceled. Let's call this right here, and actually, this is a little too bright. I'm gonna blend in with the white, so choose dark green and dark blue so we can call this height from here all the way up there h for the height of the equilateral triangle we can call this fellow right here the distance from the bottom bc to that axis that we have here we can call that y now here's the thing this takes a lot of intu oh, intuition and skill to think of so, what you need to do here is you need to use a fancy little something called torque balance. 
So basically, first of all, why do they give you this case? Well, oh god, internet was restored, so uh, now all of our diagrams just got deleted. Yeah, that's not good. All right, so uh, let's start anew, and here we have our table, uh, and let's get everything set up real quick. Let's, this thing is pretty much useless, uh, and uh, where is everything else here? Okay, so, and since we're now on a black background or a dark background, I'm going to make these fellows light again so they're more visible. All right, they're all that exhausted, we've finally done it. So, let's call this Y, and the height H. And remember, we're considering this axis right through. All right, yada yada, blah, blah. Am I using a thick one or a thin one? Whatever. All right, so, <coughs> oh, <coughs> first example of all three legs simultaneously breaking when you put a massive M in the center, well, think about it. Since it was a mass M in the center, all three of the bodies experienced equal torque. All three of the legs experienced equal torque. They experienced a torque that was MZ times some random length, which I believe is the apothem, divided by three. So, uh, some length L over 3. So, that basically tells us the most weight it can handle is MZ over 3 for each leg. That means that, uh, no, never mind. We're not going to do that demonstration right now. So, now we have to do a little something called torque balance. So, what does this mean? Well, uh, th on this triangle, we don't want it to rotate or break. So, that means that it has to be in equilibrium. And there are two conditions for equilibrium. One, net force equals zero. And two, net torque equals zero. And now, the second one is a more important one to us. Why? Well, because... What we can do is, since we have an axis here, we consider BC as just one entire side. So, what is the torque that this mass, the weight of this mass exerts on BC? Well, it's going to be F, which is F, which is two thirds mz, times R, which is y. You might ask, where's the sine theta? F R sine theta. Well, think about it. We have this axis, and we're, since we're looking at a bird's eye view, this is going into the page. In other words, if you turned it, uh, then we would be looking at something like this, which means that the two axes we're looking at are perpendicular. The weight in our axis are perpendicular, and sine 90 is 1. So, that's that. And the same can be said about the normal force, except that the normal force is going to point this way instead. All right. So, uh, two-thirds mzy, right? And now, what about the torque here? Well, it would be uh, two-thirds, well, no. How can we express the torque here? Well, instead of using two-thirds mz, two-thirds mz is going to be the total normal force by the entire table. But for bc, we can just express it as fb plus fc. That's our force. And then our radius is y, and our torque is torque bc. What about our torque a? Well, our radius is h minus y, which is this length right here. h minus y, and... FA. And keep in mind that FN is two thirds MZ because it has to hold up the mass. And FN 
is also the same as FA plus FB plus FC. Because all of these three are the individual forces of the table legs holding everything up. So, all of those together must sum up to the table's total force. Alright, so now let's talk about this torque. So, the key thing here is these torques have to be equal. Why? Well, let's imagine what happened if this thing started rotating. So, this is B, this is C, this is A. It's, uh, we can think of it as rotating around this axis that we have right here. So, if it rotated like that, then B would rotate this way, but A would rotate this way if A broke. And B would rotate this way if the leg B broke. So, this is doo -doo, oh, counterclockwise. Well, this right here is clockwise. So, is that right? Yeah. So, that means that uh, A and B are opposing. So, torque A is just going to be equal to a minus torque BC, or vice versa, but it's the exact same thing. So, uh, how can we say that in other terms? Uh, well, oh no, torque A not equal to minus torque BC. We can say torque A minus torque BC is equal to zero. So torque A has to be equal to torque BC. Why do we put a minus sign? Well, because BC is going in the opposite direction. If we define CCW to be negative, we can define CW to be positive, thus this is positive and this is negative. We can do the same thing, but vice versa, if we define CCW to be positive and CW to be negative. That was a little bit of blah, 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 blah. But anyway, we have this equation now. TA equals T, no, tau A equals tau BC. So, tau A, we said, was H minus Y F A. And tau B C, what was that? Y of F B plus F C. Now that gives us F A H minus F A Y equals Y times F B plus F C. And now when we bring this to the other side, it should be obvious what we have to factor. We get FA8 equals Y, FA plus FB plus FC. But what's FA plus FB plus FC? As we said before, it's two-thirds MV. So, that means that FA8 is equal to 2 over 3 MGY. Now, what can we say? Well, uh, we can say that... Uh, I am kind of uh, bugging over here. But, oh yeah! The max weight that uh, any leg can take is one-third mg, which we discussed over here. Which means that the f max force of leg A can apply is mg over 3. Which means that we can just plug in that max force over here to obtain the max height, H, uh, H or the max maximum value of Y. So, if we plug in M, one third MZ, H equals two thirds MZ, Y, it should be obvious that H has to be equal to two Y, uh, or Y must be H over two. And that's the maximum. Because if we make FA smaller, let's say 1 sixth MGH, then what do we get? Well, we get H equals 4Y, which means Y is even smaller, H over 4. So H over 2 is the maximum Y. And, uh, and if Y is any bigger than H over 2, snap, leg A must break. So now, that means that uh, half of H right here is the golden rule. Let's put this, yeah, it's all right. That is the golden rule. But by rotational symmetry, remember when I said you can make the axis parallel to any one of those sides earlier? Well now, let's rotate this. 
Uh, and for you to better see what I'm talking about, I'm going to redraw everything here. Our golden rule is right here, but now let's rotate this. The same thing applies to a shape that looks like this, because it's the exact same equilateral triangle. So, that means max y is still 1 half h. So that's the second defining line. Once you rotate it 120 degrees again, it's still, uh, also an equilateral triangle. And y must be equal to 1 half h. So that means this length must finally also be the max h. And these three defining lines give us the final area that is the correct answer. So, an equilateral triangle that looks something like this is the correct answer, which I believe would be choice A. Thank you everyone for watching. This was probably the hardest one of all the last few, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!